Uh, it's Thursday morning and we haven't even got to 11 o'clock uh, Eastern time. Jared Moscovich has literally buried Marjorie Taylor Greene and the Kennedy family have uh, well, done exactly the same to RFK. I am announcing today my candidacy for the presidency of the United States. I do not run for the presidency merely to oppose any man, but to propose new policies. I run because I am convinced that this country is on a perilous course and because I have such strong feelings about what must be done and I feel that I'm obliged to do all that I can. We're here in Philadelphia with my siblings and uh, representing my first cousins, um, all of whom, with the exception of two, uh, all who are legally able are supporting Joe Biden for re-election. And we're doing that because we feel that the stakes are so high. You know, you just showed that clip of daddy in which he said, I cannot stand aside. Um, and we cannot stand aside when we have, we're up against a man who says he wants to be a dictator on day one, who says he's going to change the Constitution so he can go after his enemies, who's cozied up to dictators from Putin to Xi Jinping and um, Kim Il Jong, Kim Il Un. We need to stop this man. We need to stop Trump. And we need to elect uh, Joe Biden, who has always stood with the middle class, who has brought us over 14 million new jobs, 800,000 manufacturing jobs, and who cares about the middle class and working class in America. It is so jarring uh, to me as an outsider uh, to see somebody carrying your father's name, who is, again, a, he a hero of mine, a hero of, of millions, but to see him running the campaign he's running and having Donald Trump's biggest supporters support him, too, I have to ask, what does it do to you to see his campaign out there and the rest of your family. This is going to be a very, very close election. We can't have people voting for third parties, no matter who they are. I, in every family, we have, um, you know, Americans have diverse views. You have to love your family members. You don't have to like them. I love Bobby, and I like Bobby, but this campaign is not about Bobby. This campaign is about Trump versus Biden. And what we need to do today is focus on Biden winning. Together as a committee that we begin uh, Chairman Comer's therapy session, right? Um, you know, a member of the other side wanted to confirm what the title of the hearing was, right? That Chinese propaganda. Well, we know the title of the hearing certainly isn't about impeachment anymore. And Chairman Comer has suffered tremendous loss. And we all know in our life what it's like to suffer tremendous loss. There's all sorts of different stages of grief. And that's the loss, obviously, of his, of his impeachment hearing. And everyone deals with that different ways. And sometimes it takes, takes time to grieve and struggle. And, and fill that hole, that, that void that now exists, now that he no longer has impeachment. But the only way we as a committee are gonna help Chairman Comer get better is we have to get to the root cause, right? So for today's therapy session, okay, I wanna talk about denial, right? The denial that the impeachment hearings are over. And the denial, obviously, that he started with the 1023 form which was Russian disinformation. And so, you know, Chairman Comer, psychology teaches us that, you know, someone might be, like him, 
using denial as a defense mechanism. And signs include that you refuse to talk about the problem, you find ways to justify your behavior, you blame other people or outside forces for causing the problem, you persist in your behavior despite the consequences, you promise to address the problem maybe in the future, or you avoid thinking about the problem. And so in addition to these signs that Chairman Comer has been displaying, as we saw in the beginning, you know, he also might be feeling hopeless or helpless. I just want the chairman to know that we're pulling for him. We really, we really are. I know, I know it's been hard uh, to become uh, someone who was used by the Russians, but the good news is, is that he set this hearing today on Chinese propaganda, because propaganda, we've already lost him to Russian propaganda. I mean, we got to build a force field around the chairman to make sure we don't lose him to Chinese propaganda as well. And in fact, you can see behind me, these are quotes from the chairman, Chairman Comer, every single solitary time, and there are hundreds more, that he went on TV in interviews and talked about this 1023 form, which was all Russian disinformation. But we, we, we got to make the chairman understand that it's going to be okay. We will get him through this, but he's got to recognize He's got to recognize that denial is not just a river in Egypt. He, he is going to have to face the fact that he was taken by the Russians. Now, I want to address something else that went on in this committee by another member. And I, I say this as someone whose grandparents uh, escaped the Holocaust. So my grandmother was part of the kinder transport out of Germany. Uh, her parents were killed in Auschwitz. My grandfather, her husband, escaped Poland from the pogroms. Um, you know, the idea that we pretend that behavior is acceptable and regular. There are no concentration camps in Ukraine. They're not taking babies and shooting them in the air because they're Jewish. There's no gas chambers. There's no ovens. They're not railing people in. They're not ripping gold out of people's mouth. They're not taking stuff out of their home. They're not trying to erase a people. They're Ukrainians. Stop bringing up Nazis and Hitler. The only people who know about Nazis and Hitler are the 10 million people and their families who lost their loved ones. Generations of people who were wiped out. It is enough of this disgusting behavior using Nazis as propaganda. You want to talk about Nazis? Get yourself over to the Holocaust Museum. You go see what Nazis did. It's despicable that we use that and we allow it and we sit here like somehow it's regular. Oh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I welcome you back. I'm, I'm sorry we were trying to talk together and you know, get you through the, through the hearing, but, but I, I look forward potentially to talking to you at a, a future session. So thank you, I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Chair now recognizes myself for uh, questions. Mr. Bannis, you you mentioned in your testimony.